right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome to my June 2019 update video, part due. So yeah, as always with these monthly update videos, I'm gonna go over some first life stuff as well as YouTube-y stuff. So let's just jump right into it, as uh, Philly D would say, and uh, talk about some YouTube-y things. So first thing I do wanna say is I wanna thank you guys so much for all the support for my recent Andy Talks Navy episode. Um, it was a very special episode that I wanted to cover. It felt really good to get all that stuff off my chest and I've never really talked about it to anybody or made a video about it. Um, talked about some aspects of it, but I've never gone that in depth with uh, my experience overseas from 2013 to 2015. And it felt really good to get all that out there. And I'm so glad that you guys um, resonated with it as well. To see all the comments and views and all the support and messages and all that kind of stuff really makes a guy feel loved, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I definitely appreciate that so much. Moving on to personal life. Um, as you guys know, I started college back up last month. Uh, first time in going on two years since I got out of college the, the uh, second time around. And uh, things are going good this time. Um, going to class, which helps. Getting homework and stuff submitted on time. You know, it's a, it's a major plus, obviously. And uh, it just, you know, the workload is very logically paced. There's no like weird surprise assignments or anything like that. And it just makes it so much easier to figure out what to do when instead of having to you know, piece things together. You know, it's nice to have it all organized for me. So grade-wise, I'm doing exceptionally well. My main obstacle now is saving up for my return to Japan. And I've come across um, owing the VA some money from an overpayment several years back. And they're taking it out of my BAH, book stipends, all that kind of stuff. It's really hurting my ability to save up for Japan. But in addition to that, even if I do manage to save up to go out to Japan, it's gonna hurt my viability to stay in the country, to be able to live in the country, basically, because uh, it's cutting my living allowance down. So it's very difficult to figure out where to go from here as far as that goes. So I'm looking at other ways to raise the money, not just to move out to Japan, but also in savings as well. So if the GI Bill is a little short that month, you know, like every, every little bit counts as far as that goes. So I wanna make sure I have a very healthy amount saved up. So on the tight months, I got the money to do it. So I'm looking at uh, possibly bringing in some more freelance clients, doing some more freelance work, um, maybe selling some things, maybe getting a part-time job if workload and everything permits from school. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how much money I save up. If I don't get accepted into the school I want to, or just any school out in Japan in general, then it's not gonna mean anything because I won't have my in to go to Japan, right? But at the same time, you know, you need to afford the plane ticket money, you gotta afford living expenses until the GI Bill kicks in, considering how much I owe the VA and how much they're taking per housing payment, you know, it's gonna take some time. So it's very difficult at this stage to figure out how to get out to Japan. But, you know, I am a problem solver. That's, uh, that's kind of my deal. So, like I said, looking at ways to be able to make it happen because, you know, I want to make this happen. And, you know, even once I get out to Japan, I've also looked at different ways that I can uh, make money out there. And obviously, the, the most obvious way for me to do it would be to get a job. But with my um, student visa, I can only work so many hours a day and so many hours a week as well. So I'm very limited in how much I can earn on a student visa versus here in America, I could work uh, like a full-time job and still go to school. But you know, for me personally, I don't have the energy to, to do something like that, but it is possible. But you know, if you have a student visa in Japan, you can only work, I think a max of 28 hours a week, 
So you have to be very practical about the type of work you do and how many hours it takes because like every hour counts, right? That's what I love about doing freelance work is that, you know, for me, I'm a very fast editor. So that really cuts down the time that I work. And there's also other little side hustles and stuff like that I could do on when I'm out in Japan, you know, I can, in addition to getting like a, a regular ass job, you know, I could also do some English teaching on the side, doing stuff with what I work with in uh, video, doing some stock video. And uh, there's lots of different places out in Japan that I can make stock video of, including a lot of the, uh, the popular tourist attractions, but also I wanna do some stuff of some lesser known things. So, you know, just kind of get a, a little bit of everything basically. And I'm not looking to make a whole lot of money from it, but if you put out enough clips and you have like a whole library of stuff, all that stuff adds up, you know? All the little pennies and dimes and everything eventually add up. And if anything, it's a nice little secondary income, you know? So I figure since I'll be doing a lot of shooting videos, not just for myself, but for others, um, again, that's another source of income as well. The opportunities are out there, is what I'm trying to say. But it's nice and will help really put me at ease to come out there with a pretty sizable nest egg just to make sure during them, uh, them rough months that I'm good. And, you know, even if I didn't have these issues with the GI Bill and was getting paid the normal amount, I would still have to uh, have a nest egg set up so that way during the months that I'm not in school, because even if I'm going to school year round, you know, spring, summer and fall, there are some months where school's not in session and if school's not in session, you don't get paid. So you got to make sure you have plenty of money saved up to still cover those living expenses and everything until things come back to normal, you know? So that's where a lot of that stuff really comes into play. So yeah, it's uh, it's not gonna be easy for me coming back to Japan. Never really expected it to be. I'm still not gonna give up, you know? I know there's a lot of people who's probably gonna say in the comments, well, Andy, you should probably just wait to graduate before you get back out to Japan and all this other stuff. I would still have to save up a lot of money to get out there because even if I came out there with a job, I'm not gonna get paid until a month later anyway. I still have to save up anyway, so it's not really gonna matter. And at least with the GI Bill, even though I, I don't get paid as much as I would be if I didn't owe money, it's better than nothing. And if I just went out there on a work visa, you know, I wouldn't be getting that GI Bill money. So it's always good to have money coming in. That's what I'm trying to say. And plus, you know, being a student, you do have a lot of free time, more so than if you were to work a full-time job. So you're a lot more able to, uh, to do things like that. I have like the most flexibility with my time being a student versus getting a work visa and being full time doing whatever, teaching English to the kids, I don't know. That's pretty much all I wanna say in this little update video. Um, things are going pretty good. Really thankful for you guys for sticking around with me. Um, even during this time, which may not be the most exciting time on my channel, I realized that I know I don't really get out of the house as much as I did back when I was out in Japan. I gotta worry about safety and stuff out in America these days. And plus, you know, to me, it's not really that interesting. I mean, it might be for some people. There might be some outside videos coming in the future. You know, maybe bringing back the car vlogs or something like that. I actually did a little car vlog test on my new car, which is very loud, but found a way to uh, to work around it. So there might be some, some car vlogs in the future. Definitely stay tuned for that. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanna say in this uh, little update video. So that said guys, this is the Andy San, signing out for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later guys, bye.